So today uh, I have a question from a student about force and it's a good one and I'm really really, really pleased uh, to have with me my training brother Christopher uh, all the way from Australia and he's also one of uh, Sifu Derek's students We've known each other a long long time and I'm really fortunate because uh, Christopher here he's a internationally ranked athlete so he's like uh, multiples of times stronger than me so there's no way that in any way I could use force to beat this guy. So he's got, it's the perfect person for me to demonstrate with. So talking about force today and um, first of all we've covered this in previous videos how we're using our structure to generate force not our muscles at all and that's, that's really important so uh, often I demonstrate this to students who are starting out that uh, using muscles uh, limits your ability to generate force from close in. So, for example, like Christopher here, if I, if we got into a situation where he's coming in to clinch me, and we'll, we'll do this this way so you can see. So we're so close in, and if I'm now using muscle against him, and you know he's more solid than me, so if I push, uh, that's what's happening. It's really not a penetrating or impacting him at all. But now if I relax my structure, and even from so close in, I can generate force into him. You can feel that sort of going into you. It's a penetrating sort of force. So. We've covered that in previous videos, as I said, using a structure, relaxing, all of that. Now let's get to the more interesting point, which my student asked me. So, so we learn how to generate this force. Does that mean, against an opponent or uh, his arm here, does that mean I use this Wing Chun force that I've learned to generate and I can somehow blast my way through? Well, the answer is no. Wing Chun's force is not some magic power that defies the laws of science as we understand them. So, so for example, in this year, his arm is strong and it's producing a muscular force, uh, we, well, he's doing it now for the purposes of this video, it's producing a muscular force and it's aiming towards me. Is it possible that somehow my Wing Chun force, which is uh, relaxed and using structure, somehow that force is going to challenge this force and somehow blow it away? Well, of course, this being video, but this being YouTube, I could say, yes, it works. And of course, it being YouTube, you have no way to verify it. But in a real life situation, it ain't so. Laws of science prevail. So if there is a force coming this way, no matter what type of force I produce in that way to oppose it, then it is force versus force. Never mind if my force is generated by me being relaxed, etc., and his is a muscular force. It's still one force coming this way, one force going head on to it. Not going to work. Not going to work in a real life situation. In fact, force against force means the stronger guy is going to win. So, how do we produce force and get our desired outcome? That is, to not only control the opponent, but hit. And I've hinted at this in other videos with a cup, etc. Students of mine will understand this. We're talking really in Wing Chun about multiple vectors of force. What do I mean? When his hand is here, I don't, if I just come straight, instinctively, the person will resist against that, that point of contact, force against force. But Wing Chun, even though I'm relaxed, I don't just travel in one vector, because I won't get through, I'm trying to hit him, can't get through. But I have one vector of force going through him, I'm going towards his center line, but my shoulder is relaxed, so this starts to rotate, and then the last vector opens up because my wrist is relaxed, so all of them together, allows me to come through his force. That is how it's worked. There are three vectors of force. Instead of just one, I got one, this is two, relaxed, and the third one here, it, it, that's what happens to him. Okay? Wherever we're doing it in Wing Chun, we have multiple vectors of force happening. Say, for example, this part of Siu Lin Tao. Siu Lin Tao, you see, if I hold my hand as a rigid structure, and people think, oh, it's a chopping strike, etc. Well, you know, again, as I say, Christopher, much stronger than me. You can put his two hands together even if he likes, gripping them together. So again, one hand chopping, and I'm thinking, oh, I set my structure and I relax, but I'm still thinking one vector of force and chop. See? I'm going to try and do it hard now. I can resist that. But now I'm going to do multiple vectors of force. Each section of my hand travels independently, so this turns... This turns, and even the wrist part turns. See? Open him up like so, without any um, muscular effort on my part. 
So I'm getting my, my desired goal. Relaxed force disrupting his muscular force. And it works even the other way. Like for example, again, so a strong hand. Now, you see, if I just try and come back, th this part of Siu and Tao. This is not the only way you have to apply those movements, by the way. I'm not saying this is... I'm just, we're just demonstrating the idea here. Multiple vectors of force. So again, if I'm doing this, and I'm just uh, trying to use my structure, relax, still, one vector of force, he's instinctively, the moment he feels that, he resists and he pulls that way. So his muscles too strong won't work. But again, multiple vectors of force. I'm coming, this is relaxing, and this also, this last part here, loose, producing another vector of force. That makes it very hard for the human body to resist. Let's see what happens. You see, from here, multiple vectors of force, open him up, and then I can strike him there. That's how it works, the multiple vectors of force, you see, because, as I said, he will feel one vector of force, and he can resist it, whether it's there or there. Instinctively, he feels it, he resists. But when you start doing two vectors, it becomes more taxing on his body to respond instinctively. And when you add a third vector through the wrist, it starts to totally disrupt his structure, and you can go through. Okay, so multiple vectors of force. How do we learn to generate them? Because it sounds like, ooh, different, independent. Well, really, it's back to the basics. Siulim Tao, hidden within it. Uh, as Christopher has said to me before, it's the small rotations that are hidden, small rotation movements that are hidden within uh, Siulim Tao. So, for example, when you're doing your Tan Tao, it's not as though you lock your wrist, lock this, and then your Tan Tao, you're just rotating your shoulder joint. Well, if you're a beginner, perhaps you're making a mistake in doing that way, and sometimes I say to students, don't forget that hidden within there is, each joint is moving independently. You're focusing on the center, that's loose, as I always say, floating like a boat. This here is moving independently. You are, without consciously thinking about it, developing multiple vectors of force. Even in your punch from here, you don't hold this stiff, you don't hold your wrist stiff, and as you're punching, no, it's loose. And as this moves, every, every joint is able to move freely, like so. You don't have to overanalyze and think about it when you're doing a movement like this. Here I have to think, oh, independently, first I start the rotation in this part of the arm, then I swing the forearm, and then... No. Siulim Tao, just small thought, perhaps, you can think of it that way. It's a little idea. Just practice the movement slowly, not being rigid, and you are starting to cultivate these multiple vectors of force. Now, where else are you applying it? You're also learning it when you're doing, like your chi sao, for example, and you're doing it like so. Now, I always say to students, remember that uh, it's quite difficult to do two things at once. So, quite often when your opponent is trying to attack you on one side, they will neglect the other side, so that's where the opening, and they, you, you, you can normally hit on the other side. Uh, so wherever they are trying to attack, sure, deal with that threat, but don't forget there's probably an opportunity on the other hand. I will do it this way, so I'm pressing here, and then I neglect there, and I get hit there. That's often the case. Now this is again someone who's... Uh, we all do this when we're doing chi sao and we're starting out. It's a common mistake. We, we focus on one side and we forget. We're creating an opening on the other side. And we're in Wing Chun, and we're thinking about all these theories. Let alone someone on the street. They're not thinking about multiple vectors. They, I'm generalizing here, but most people will put their emphasis on attacking with this punch, and so your opening will be there, but first off, I've got to deal with this. And how I do it is, I counter this with multiple vectors, so I don't I intercept by producing a force against it, no. But I use multiple vectors to open up his force. My hand is moving, all the joints are moving freely. So whereas he's producing force in one direction, I defeat it by multiple directions, allows me to go through and strike him where I want. Again, to develop all of this, it's not some secret technique or anything, but if you practice your Siulim Tao, I always say, go back to the basics, the Siulim Tao, within there, multiple vectors of force, the idea is hidden within here, as long as you're practicing your form correctly, in this fashion. Anything to add, Christopher? No, it's good. Okay. Thank you.